well the sun's out the wind's not blowing so it's a great day to do a little shooting day so got a little bit of an uh, interesting gun uh, this gun actually doesn't belong to me it belongs to a real good friend of mine chris he's helped me with some of the youtube stuff so this is the Caltech rmr 30 no i said that wrong pmr 30. so this is the 22 mag semi-auto handgun that holds 30 rounds that's pretty crazy um it's a full-size gun you know i I guess I grabbed the tape measure, but I mean, this is a big gun. This is the size as a 1911 or so. I got a tape measure right here, I'll grab it. So overall length on this gun, I don't know how I can hold this with the camera, is about seven and a half inches. So uh, that's a pretty big gun. Um, the height on this guy is, you know, what is that? About five and a half inches. So uh, it's it's relatively thin, an inch or so um, width-wise this way, uh, but the gun's really light. And this whole thing about's got to be made out of polymer, which they've proven that. That's nothing wrong with that. Super lightweight and holds 30 rounds of ammo. That's pretty crazy. Um, it's a little bit interesting. I'll show you the 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 controls on the on the left side of the gun. Standard safety, which is ambidextrous. And then this is the slide stop. The gun's empty, of course, but, uh, so there's a slide stop. A little bit stiff, but not bad. Um, the mag release is more like the old European style guns where it's got the catch on the bottom. Pops that out, so there's the mag. So it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a unique gun. So um, I've, I've been shooting this with Chris since he bought it brand new. Can't say this gun is the most reliable. I truly believe that this might be one of those guns that takes a long break in. You know, I've heard uh, some people say, rimfire handguns, you need to shoot 500 rounds through it uh, before you can even make a decision whether it's, you know, reliable or not. Um, I don't think Chris has got that much through there. Uh, he bought this gun right before the COVID hit. Ammo had just been crazy. 22 mag ammo has just been, I mean, it's about a 17 HMR or, or, you know, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's like this whole ammo crazy deal but so anyway this don't have a ton of rounds to it he seems like the cci has been the most reliable so that's what we're going to shoot today we're going to shoot some of the other stuff just for reliability he's got three or four different brands of ammo here he told me i can go ahead and shoot a few of them but um we're going to do some target testing with the ccis but uh just a quick note about what youtube's doing with gun channels uh, you will not see me insert a mag into this gun or rack the chamber or rack the slide they're getting weird about it. I don't know what's going on. They're very unclear, but I've I've seen some YouTube channels that have had some warnings because of that. So if you see me step off camera real quick, that's what I'm doing. I'm not hiding anything, but it's just the world we live in. It's politics and who knows whatever else. So anyway, so uh, talk some more about this thing. I don't know if you guys have ever shot a 22 Magnum handgun. It's It's almost hard to describe. You know, it's not terribly loud, but this thing has got muzzle blast. Holy smokes. Um, it just feels like you're getting hit in, face, in the face with a pillow. I, I don't know. It's, it's very hard to describe. I would almost rather shoot a 45 ACP than this because of that. But with that being said, 30 rounds of 22 mag, you know, for a trail gun, whatever. Man, that, that's, a, you know, pretty hard to beat. And as, and as big as it is, and we'll see how what kind of accuracy. I mean, it, it's really easy to shoot. Of course, not much recoil. Um, and uh, I know like my brother's big houndsman, they use 22 mags for just about everything. You know, lions, that kind of stuff. They use 22 mags a lot. You know, I know that I've had, you know, beef at my house for the last 25 years. And in the old days, we used to have the mobile butcher shop would come to your house. They would kill the animal for you. And then they'd take it to the shop and then process it. They all used 22 magnums. You would not believe how fast a 1500 pound beef animal drops when shot proper bullet placement with 22 mag and that's what everyone I'm used so I think the 22 mag is a little bit underrated as far as power um, in the field anyway I don't have a 22 magnum not sure I'll ever get one it's just not the right fit for me but uh, so we'll do some shooting with this we'll see what kind of accuracy it does and uh, go from there just talk about the ammo real quick this is a CCI game point is what they're calling it uh, 40 grain I need to look see if it's a hollow point it is not a hollow point. It's uh, hopefully you guys can see that. It's more like what I just described as a soft point. 
Um, so anyway, 40 grains going to 1,800 feet per second. So pretty, you know, pretty serious. I'm sure in this short barrel, it's not going to go quite that fast. But I've got the gun loaded up. We're going to take a few shots. All right, well, the slide held back the way it's supposed to, so that's good. And uh, I think Chris said that the C size have been the best functioning. So we're gonna walk up the target and have a look. All right, guys, that group ain't too bad. So that's about two inches. Of course, those two are a little better. So yeah, that's about a two inch group. Um, point of impact's about right. You can see it's good left to right. Um, I'm aiming at a six o'clock sight picture. So actually that's about dead on where I'm aiming. If this gun belonged to me, I'd probably adjust the sights a little. I like a six o'clock sight picture, so in a perfect world, this group would be maybe up into here just a little. But still, I'm shoot, that's not bad at all. Okay, well, I wasn't too unhappy with that group. I'm hoping these others will be better. So this, uh, the next three shots we're gonna take is a Hornady. It's a 30 grain VMAX. Um, I would think that would, I, who knows, I like the VMAX bullets, you know, they're, the Hornady bullets are great on these uh, rimfire stuff. I really like the Hornady's on that 17 HMR. So we'll see what these guys do. It seemed like Chris had trouble with one of these brands of ammo, but, uh, and, and I can't remember which one it is, it, even if there is trouble, but uh, very interesting because let's see if it'll tell us what the, oh, so this one's saying it's 2200 on the velocity. The other one was 18, so yeah, this will be interesting to see how it does. It might change the point of impact just a little bit with that much velocity difference and a little bit lighter bullet, so. This gun seems to be functioning pretty good. Uh, slide held back on the long, or excuse me, on the last shot. Let's go up and have a look. All right, I can't complain about that group. That's about inch and three quarters, so slightly better than uh, CCI's did, and that might be just the loose nut behind the trigger is getting dialed in a little better on this one. But point of impact's up just a little bit. Uh, man, I'm, I'm pleased with that. I think if this was my gun that I was gonna try to really spend some time with, I would probably lean more toward those Hornady bolts at this point, but uh, let's go take another shot. All right, so the next batch of ammo we have is Remington. They call them Magnum Rimfire. I have not seen a lot of these Remingtons around. Um, interesting on this one, this one's a 33 grain bullet. They're advertising 2,000 feet per second. So kind of in between the Hornady and the CCIs. They're calling this an AccuTip. Never seen that before. It's kind of a green polymer tip. I think that's kind of, kind of equivalent to the VMAX is what I'm going to guess. But we'll take three shots with it and see if the gun likes them. All right, well, it seemed to function just good on, or just as good on that one as it did with anything else. Bolt stayed back, and uh, I don't know, we'll go have a look, but just take a quick second and ask you guys to please hit the subscribe button. I'm having a lot of fun with this channel. We're doing a lot of fun things. Um, we're hoping to see the channel grow a little bit. Um, so yeah, hit the like and the subscribe button if you have a minute. I appreciate it. Let's walk up and have a look. Well, all right, that gun does definitely not like the Remingtons. I got one here. One here, I can't really see where the other one's at. It might have pulled clear off the paper, but yeah, it does not like the Remingtons at all. About time for me a new target too, but I got one more uh, brand of ammo I'm gonna try, and then we're gonna see which one it likes the best. All right, so the next brand of ammo we're gonna try is the Norma uh, 22 Magnum, of course. It's a 40 grain, they're called a hollow point. Uh, 1800 feet per second is what they're advertising on this guy. And it's interesting, this has a pretty generous hollow point in it. It almost reminds me of like a 22 Stinger. A pretty pretty big hole there. Probably be real effective on small game. So we'll see how the old Caltech likes this one. I was gonna talk about the sights just a little bit. These sights are pretty neat on it, but they're not adjustable. You can adjust the front for windage. Looks like it's got some tiny little set screws in there. Uh, the rear sight is just molded right into the slide. Um, but it's got these, uh, 
all these light gathering. I can't think of what they're called right now or what, what Caltech's cause them. But these sites are pretty neat. They're, uh, they're really easy to see, you know, for old wore out eyes like mine. Um, I think even like real low light conditions, these guys would stick out like a sore thumb. So I think that's kind of neat about them. Um, very unusual. Never seen another handgun with this style of sights on it. But uh, they seem to be working just fine for me today. Um, like I say, with the with this windage of or the windage adjustment on the front, a guy could get that dialed in pretty easy. And a lot of these handguns don't have elevation uh, adjustment on the side, so this is kind of what everything else has been. But uh, let's take a shot with these Normas and see. I don't know. At least from comments, I don't have a lot of experience with Norma ammunition. Um, it just seems like it's not available. I'm not sure where Chris found this, but. Uh, you don't see Norma ammunition on the shelves locally. It doesn't seem like. Um, Norma's been in the ammunition business for, boy, you know, probably over 100 years, a long time from Sweden. But, uh, yeah, so this will be interesting for me. I've, I've never used Norma on anything before, so. All right, we'll have a look. All right, well that one wasn't too bad. So that's about a two and a half inch group on that one. Um, you know, point of impact's about the same where everything else is. Uh, this seems like one of those guns that's a little bit particular about ammo. So we'll go ahead and mark those. All right guys, got one more, uh, one more brand of ammo to try. This is a Winchester. They're calling it a varmint small game. It's a 40 grain hollow point. They're advertising 1900 feet per second. So it's it's right in there with everything else. A little bit of an interesting bullet design. It's a it's got a lot of lead exposed and a pretty generous hollow point. So uh yeah, I don't know. That would probably be really good on small game application. So we'll see if the gun likes it. We'll take three shots. Okay, let's walk up and have a look. Okay, well, we got three shots right there. And uh, we're about inch and three quarter, maybe slightly under inch and three quarter. So point of impact's about where the rest of them have been. Man, I wouldn't be scared of that Winchester ammo at all. All right, I think we're gonna wrap the video up today. It's been, this has been a fun video. I have honestly gained a little bit of love for this gun. Um, I've been with Chris. He's had this gun for a couple years. He's been over to my place. We've done a ton of shooting with it. A lot of frustration because this gun has not been that reliable. He's had a lot of jams, a lot of malfunction issues with it. It's honestly turned me off on it. I mean, I just thought, uh, piece of crap, not interested in it. But I believe it's one of those guns that takes a few hundred rounds to get it broke in. I mean, we've shot five different types of ammo today. Not a malfunction, one. Um, I might load it up and just shoot a full mag through it or, or a half mag through it and shoot it with some steel. But um, yeah, I've gained some love for this gun. So I don't know, let's, uh, we'll, I'll put 10 or 15 rounds in a mag. We'll shoot at the steel target and see what it does. All right, so I got 10 or 15 rounds loaded in the mag. I'm gonna shoot at the 50 yard steel gong target. I'm not gonna shoot at the 25 because I'm a little scared of ricochets of this guy. Don't know that for sure, but it just seemed like it'd be prone to do that. So don't expect any hits, but we'll give it a shot at the 50 yards. One hit. There's a malfunction. That was with the Remington ammo.
All right, so now we understand what Chris's frustration is. He's had a lot of malfunctions like that. Um, it would be interesting to see. So the Remington's is the one that actually I didn't like it either. Um, I know that when before I started doing this video, he told me, he said the CCI seemed to be the best in it. So maybe it's just one of those fussy guns about ammo. Um, well, I'll tell you, the accuracy potential is there. It certainly did not like the Remington's. Um, we shot the Hornady's. They shot good. The CCI shot good. The Winchester shot good. So I don't know what would I do. What would I say on this gun for me? I am probably would not be interested in buying this gun. I almost like the idea of it better than the gun itself. I'll tell you the muzzle blast on this thing is just almost a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, of course I'm wearing good earplugs, so it's not that loud. It's just I can't even describe it. It's just a weird thing. Um, for a trail gun, I would say this would be outstanding. You got 30 rounds of 22 mags in a real lightweight package. And I think if a guy did the research, spent the time with the gun, see which ammo it likes, it's probably pretty reliable. Um, I know for me, I probably wouldn't buy it, but if someone's looking at buying one of these, I would probably not hesitate, but also you need to know going into it. They're a little bit ammo specific, just spend some time with it and put some rounds to it. I think this gun probably, if you put 500 to 1,000 rounds to it, would probably run like a Swiss watch and never have a second trouble with it. I know this gun has not had that much rounds through it. Maybe a couple hundred rounds at the most. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you take a minute, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, and leave some comments. Um, tell me if you guys have any experience with this. I'd be interested to hear. And uh, and let me know where you're from. Um, I've had some interesting conversations with people from outside of this area, and I find that interesting. So uh, yeah, please leave a comment.